happened, I was only four years old. So for me to kind of grow up around my father, who was the head coach of this football team at SCW, it was, it was a high school at the time. How many of you are from Jacksonville? You ever heard of Gilbert Mirror Middle School? Yeah, anybody ever went to Gilbert Mirror? Well, once upon a time, that was a junior high, junior senior high school, and it got converted to a senior high school. And then at the close of the 1969 academic school year, they closed the school and made it a middle school. So that high school basically existed for about 20 years. course of time, it earned a lot of distinguishing honors, it created a lot of outstanding educators. Uh, one of the, the outstanding educators uh, was named, was the principal at Rain, uh, Gil, his name was William Rain, who Rain High School was named after. Uh, the former instructor at Gilbert by the name of Andrew Robinson, Dr. Robinson and opened Rains High School and then went on to become the Dean of Education and the Interim President of UNL. So the connection between Gilbert and Rains is kind of like uniquely blended because here's a man who did not do a whole lot in the community from the standpoint of having his name very, very large, William Rains, but his name was put on the high school. Ironically, it was the second to last
decide, okay, 1958 is gonna be that year. I won. So this is the full suit. This is the full suit. It may not look too much different than what you may have seen of teams over time, but the difference is the helmets are different. They're not as strong as they are now. The coaches are here. This is the principal. These are assistant coaches. Now, my father was a very proud man, and he always tried to minimize his being in the forefront. He didn't like to have all the spotlight on him. So he's way back here. Almost not ever to see. That was just him. You know, he's giving credit to everybody else but him. Now, on this particular team, there's a, there's a, a young guy who went on to become probably the greatest athlete in Jacksonville sports. Anybody know who that might be? No? Anybody ever heard of a Bob Hayes Wheeler? You ever heard of Bob Hayes? Okay, well, Bob Hayes was on this team. Bob Hayes was on this team. Number changed from 39 to 24. So in this particular year, he was wearing like number 39, and then it changed. So uh, I'm gonna have to do some research to make sure I find that picture. But this is the team, and as you can see, it's probably about 35, 40 guys there. But this was the team. Next slide, please. Here's the coaching staff. Again, here's my father. Gentleman by the name of Dr. Uh, Albert White, who is now Dr. Albert White, who was once the uh, former principal at Duval, went on to administrate in the uh, school system. But here's the coaching staff. He's got six guys and himself who coach this team. Next slide, please. So here's the schedule. I want you to look at this schedule very closely, and what you'll notice is how many teams they play. This is 1958, and we're talking about segregation. There are no McDonald's. There are no Holiday Inn. There are no places where they can just pull up on the side of the road and stop and eat and sleep. There are no places like that. So for them to go from the northern point of Florida, which is Jacksonville, to play Miami on a two-lane highway, about an eight hour ride on a bus. Eight hours on a bus. Have you ever taken a long bus trip? Yeah. Isn't that a grueling thing to be on that bus that long? Uncomfortable, you're trying to get comfortable and move around. You know? So imagine sitting next to somebody maybe bigger than you and they're taking up most of the space and you're cramped up next to the window or in the aisle. But this is what they had to deal with. They had to travel places, because there weren't many schools in town to get these games in. So again, the at time is where they had to travel. Next slide, please. So, first game of the season, they go to Daytona, play Campbell Street High School, and beat them 7 to 6. One point. No big deal. You win the first game, we're happy. Trying to be perfect at something and win every game, you don't think about. 
about it as this particular time because this is just the first game. You think about it as you get to the last two parts of the season, but this is what happened. Next slide. They won all these games and got to the game against their biggest rival, which is Tampa. Now, anybody ever heard of the Northwest Classic? Before there was a Northwest Classic, there was a East-West Classic. And Stanton was on the west side of town, and what they did was they took Main Street, and Main Street basically split Jacksonville in half. So everything to the west of Main Street, which was going toward 8th Street and over toward Merle Avenue, that was the west side, and that's where Stanton was, and everything was going toward the river, was the east side. So you got to get rid of Stanton. The East-West Classic. Now, this wasn't any simple type of game was always held on Thanksgiving time. Always held on Thanksgiving time. And the people would dress up to go to this game like they were going to church on Sunday. That's the way they would do it. There would be a parade that Saturday morning with both bands, floats, people standing all over downtown Jacksonville. You would go home you would have your Thanksgiving dinner earlier than normal because the game would kick off at 8 o'clock. <laughs> Where everybody still is now, they, the stadium used to be called the Gator Bowl. It used to be called the Gator Bowl. So, go home, freshen up, eat that early Thanksgiving dinner because you got to go to what? <laughs> we got we to gotta go. Okay, if you're not ready to go, you're going to get left. <laughs> you can be a slow eater if you want to. You're going to get left. I didn't finish my dessert. You're going to get left. <laughs> because this game is like a bowl game. It is the game. And that game would probably have 10, 15,000 people at the game. They would have what they would call mothers of the team. And they would be dressed up and they would be sitting on the field in this little box off area on both sides. Now, not in 58, but like in 1960, one of the most memorable things a kid could want to be for a football team was a mascot. Like running out in front of the team in a little football uniform. I was too young in 58, but in 1960, I used to run out in front of that <laughs> I thought I was like a captain. But here it is, this big game to be played between arch rivals. Now the coach at Stanton High School, his name was James T. Small. He coached my father in high school. That is his mentor. He played his mentor as the head coach to head coach. My father had a saying, as no quarter, he wasn't going to ask me anything from Coach Small, and he's definitely not going to give me anything from Coach Small. But you know what he tells his players? We're going to go out there and beat Stanton like they told us. And that was the mindset. Beat Stanton and beat everybody else. So they've gone through this whole season now. I mean, here they are, 8-0. and 9-0, I'm sorry, 9-0. And they're into the 10th game of the season. Now they got to play Stanton. And I told some of the guys who were on that team, what y'all didn't understand was this. When you play your mentor, you go through a lot of emotions. You know, that's like playing your mother or father in a game. You know, you, you, know, you, know, you want to beat you want to beat them, but you want to beat them pretty bad. You want to embarrass them, you know, because they're like, yeah, you think you'll beat them. So I'm like, he wants to beat Coach Small and Stanton, not just because they're the rivals, but Coach Small has instilled in him that you don't ease up on anybody, me or anybody else. So they play this game. The first game of the season starts off with a 7-6 win. The last game of the regular season ends 7-6. 7-6. So what an emotional roller coaster these guys have been on from the beginning to the end. So now they are the city champs. They're the best in the city. They're the best. Next slide, please. So we look back at the city, 7-6. 19 to 0, 20 to 12, 53 to 6, 40 to 0. How many zeros do you see on that other side? Four. Five. Five. 
mean, not just when he was in Gilbert, but when he left Gilbert and went over to Raymond, my dad coached basically 68, 12 years. How do you say that same prayer? Unless it's something that you have restricted to do. So, next slide. They're ready to go. The game goes like this. In the first half, Phillips throws the first touchdown. They're up 7 0. Second quarter, Gilbert scores the touchdown. 7 0. Halftime is tied. Yeah. 